Hi everybody, welcome to Sewing Box Stitch Club. Um, today's pattern is the Bow Diddly Tote Bag. Nice, simple one for you, this one, okay? And lots and lots of different ways you can hack this um, so that each one can be different. And I'll show you some of those hacks as well in later videos. So, this version, another one here. This is one, this is probably about ooh, two years old at least. Um, made it for a holiday a couple of years ago, so that's been washed quite a lot of times. This one I used polyester wadding, so not quite so stiff. The one I'm gonna show you to make today, I've used a much thicker wadding on this one, so it's got a bit more oomph and quilted it as well to give it more oomph. But I will also add in a mini version, um, which is this little baby version because my granddaughter wanted one with um, bunny ears on it as the tie and this one is just using interfacing so this version of the bag and in the written instructions it will tell you if you use interfacing you don't need to do any quilting so it's really really simple the pattern um, you are going to have to stick it together sorry about that with sellotape um, if you want to cut the whole of the bag though print the pattern out twice so you can stick all your bits together this would be really useful because if you then want to say put a block or um, some kind of uh, applique design in the middle then you can really line it up on your fabric so you know what you're doing. Okay, so you're going to need two of the main colour that's going to be the outside of the bag. You then need to cut two of lining exactly the same. Um, the one I'm going to make in a minute actually is going to be with this fantastic zebra fabric. Um, I think that was a Rose and Hubble actually. Um, and then handles, which you can cut from the main colour or the lining, doesn't really matter. Um, and then the bow pieces, again you can use scraps if you want, if you want to use up your stash. And the pocket, I haven't actually put a pattern piece for the pocket because frankly that just needs to be whatever you've got lying around that you can use up and it will depend very much on the width of the fabric that you're using as well. Um, this black stuff, I don't even know where it came from. I think it came from my mum's stash, so that's probably about 350 years old. However, it will still do the job. Lining, batting. I tend to use Thermalan, which is um, almost felty in, its, in the way it is. So it just makes things a little bit stiffer, a little bit thicker. Um, you can use regular batting, in fact on the original bag I've just used polyester wadding on this one but as you can see it's not got quite as much oomph as if you were to use something like Thermalan. It is almost felty so if you can get wide felt that would do the job as well. The only thing I would say is wide felt isn't as washable so do bear that in mind if you're planning on washing it. Okay so first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the main pieces of fabric and we are going to quilt it. The reason for quilting is it's going to make it a lot stiffer and it's going to hold all these layers together so that when it gets washed it won't all fall to pieces. quilting done, a lot easier to see on the back than the front. Um, what I'm now going to do is trim up all the way around just to trim this up because it probably did move to be honest while we were sewing it a little bit. up with and I'm just disappearing for a second there you go with two of those now that's your front and back and you'll also have your lining which you do not have to quilt okay 
So the next part of this process, and for this I use clips rather than pins. You can sew down the sides here. Um, because it's a bit thicker, use at least a half inch seam allowance on this. And what I will do as well is when I've done this, I'll turn it over just to make sure that everything is matching because as sure as eggs is eggs, when you flip it over, you'll see that there are probably bits that don't match or that miss. So here, for example, so I'll clip it and then at that point, I might re-trim it because it's a lot easier. You can't see what is going on underneath when you're sewing that together. Okay, so I've clipped all the sides ready to sew. If you've got anything like this, where it's not matching, trim it up. Just so it will all match. Just bear in mind, fabric as usual, fabric has a mind of its own and it does move. And also, every time you do one of these, you're working on the bias of the fabric. So sometimes it will stretch it out and move it around a little bit, depending on the fabric. Okay, so what we're going to do now is go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew all the way down here and all the way down here and all the way across the bottom. Do not sew here. This is how we're going to turn it into a boxy bottom. Okay, so don't sew that, particularly when you're on black and thermal anchors, trust me, that would be a nightmare to unpick. So just down that side, that side, and along the bottom. Okay, while we're at the machine, we're gonna do exactly the same with the lining as well. Okay, so we're going to go down the sides and along the bottom. The big difference here is we need to leave a hole and the hole is gonna be in the bottom here. And this is going to be the birthing hole, how exciting. Okay, so again, pin it down the sides, down the sides, and then you're just gonna run in here and in here. Um, leave a reasonable size hole. We don't want forceps for the delivery. Okay, give yourself a chance. Right, so to the machine back now. So we're at the machine. I'm gonna get it under the presser foot. I'm using this one partly because it's clear so it's a lot easier to see. But as I say, if you've got a walking foot, you might wanna put the walking foot on. If not, I would probably be using my regular A foot presser foot, which is the one that comes on your machine. Half an inch for seam allowance here. I'm lining up the side of my foot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my needle across here. So if we go to the width setting here, what wobbly wobble you for width, okay? And if I move that across and take it down to zero, you can see it's taken the needle over to the far left hand side. On some machines that will actually be a setting. You'll see, um, you'll have a little picture like this with the needle centrally placed and then you might have another picture with it either on the right hand side or the left hand side, it depends on your machine. But um, the majority of machines you can move on the width, only on a straight stitch though, okay? So I'm gonna start in slightly and then I'm gonna do back stitch off the end and then come forward. So I've done the first side seam, now I'm on the bottom of the bag and because this is the main bag, I'm gonna go all the way across here. So again, I'm gonna back stitch at the front. I'm not sewing the L's, remember, not yet. I'm now gonna do that last seam up the side.
So we're now going to look at this corner here. To make this into a box, we just pull it open. So if I can show you what I'm doing there. And then you can match up these seams here and then open them up as well because what you want to do is you want to spread out these layers here so let's get a couple of clips and clip that and clip that okay this is going to be the thickest bit of sewing that you're going to do across here because you've got so many layers going on here okay so what i'm going to do back to the machine is i'm going to put on the a foot which as i say is the one that usually comes on your machine when you first get it because of this little black button here this little black button what it's going to do is when we get to a sticky bit you can see the foot moves up and down when you push the button in, it stabilizes the foot, only for a couple of stitches, but that's normally enough to just help it over the hump. Um, some people call it the humper jumper, and you can actually get an, another foot or a plastic bit on some machines that actually sits underneath. It's called the humper jumper. So there you go. Okay, so I'm all in here. Still got my needle in that left-hand side position. Okay, and you'll notice I'm not starting right on the edge. With anything like this, particularly if it's thick, you're better off to start in, go back and then come forward. The machine's much happier when it's already sewing. So I'm gonna start sewing and then I'm gonna go backwards right to the edge. Let go, bring it across again. And up here, take the first clip out. I'm gonna take a couple of stitches needles down and then I can just get in and make sure and either with your seam unripper I don't know where mine is then no change there something flat just to make sure that these stay flat underneath put the press foot back down and as I go over this hump it's going to go over okay but I'll do it anyway I'm going to stabilize that and you can hear it miserable in the middle it's going no why are you doing this to me in that case you can just do what i've done on your machine you can crank it or you've got a needle up down so you can just let it do it one step at a time just to get over that hump okay most machines will take I, that's quite a wodge going on under there and most machines will quite happily take that but they do need a little bit of help so don't just expect them to do it with no help at all. Okay. Move it. Okay, so I'm just going to do exactly the same on the other side. And like I say, as I approach this bit here, because sometimes what will happen is this will push up, so back in, flatten it down, over you go, and take that out of the way. Okay, so I'm just going to do exactly the same running along. What I'm going to do though is take my stitch length back to normal because obviously it's not quite so thick. So just here, I'm boxing the bottom. This time, because they're much thinner, what I've done is I've just gone to one side with the seams there and to the other side underneath. And I'm just gonna put a pin in there. Again, just to even out the spread.
that's the lining done. So this is one of the bow tie pieces, okay? See it's got a point down the bottom. So we're just gonna fold that in half. If you want your bow to be a little bit stiffer, um, then you could put interfacing on this. I haven't bothered, but uh, like I say, it will just make the, the bow sit a bit, a bit stiffer. I think it looks quite nice when it just flops down, actually. Um, so what we're going to do is just sew all the way around. I'm moving my needle back into the centre position. Otherwise that's going to be far too big. And I'm just going to use the side of my foot as my seam allowance on this, which is a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. I'm going to sew off. I haven't gone back because I'm now going to stitch across that anyway. But I am going to go back on this end bit because that's going to be my point. Okay, and what I can then do is just snip off that corner, snip off across there and then I'm going to turn that inside out. There we go. Here's one I made earlier. What I've then done is I've top stitched along this one here. I've pressed it and then I've top stitched. To get your top stitch nice and close, again I've used the needle position to move it this time all over to the right hand side so take it all the way up to seven and you can see now that the needle is much much closer and then I can just run it along the side of the foot so that I can get a pretty neat job on the top stitching there okay so you're going to do that with both of those ties and now we're going to look at handles so to make the handles I'm doing a bit of a cheat here um, we could make them much thinner and stitch them and then turn them inside out but trust me that takes a long time sometimes so what I'm going to do is just iron so that I can see a centre line and then I'm going to take one side up to that centre and press it all the way along Flip it round, I'm going to do the same on the other side. Bear in mind this is only a cotton poplin so that's why I'm also doing this because I want it to be a little bit sturdier for a handle. There we go. Okay so I've pressed it in half again into the centre so I've now got four layers of fabric there and what I'm then going to do and here's the other one is I'm going to top stitch down both sides. I've used black. I probably would have used cream here, actually, but you can see the stitching a lot better in black. Um, you can use a fancy stitch if you want. There's nothing if you've got fancy stitches on your machine. All it's doing is just making that slightly firmer and easier to pick up, but it saves you having to turn it all inside out because it would be too flimsy if you just did something of that width and turned it. So I'm going to go to the machine and top stitch that. But before I do, let me just show you how to do a pocket. So it doesn't matter what size it is, really. I've just done a double turn on the top, two lines of stitching. And then what I normally do is press in these seams at the side. Um, if you want, you can use a piece of cardboard that's marked with like half inch, three quarter inch or something like that, so that you can actually gauge it and press up like this. Quite a useful thing to do if you're not very good at judging it by eye. Take the cardboard out. You can buy ones like that. They're made of metal, which um, frankly strikes me as being highly dangerous because I use bias bars which are made of metal and the amount of burns I've done on those 
they're fantastic but crikey so i'm pressing in these seams and then along the bottom there we go it's not the best iron in the world but it's still hanging in there okay so when we actually come to put it in our bag oh, i just place it there and then i can pin it in place and then top stitch all the way around back stitch at the top if you want as well just to make it a little bit more secure don't put your pocket too low down because otherwise it, this it might be in the base of the bag so bear that in mind but it's quite useful to have a pocket even if just for your phone or your keys okay. So we've got the ties, two ties here, and we've got the two handles. And if I bring the bag in, and then you can see the boxy bottom that we've got, which means that that's going to sit up nicely. Okay, so measuring to put the handles on, I, I take those out of the way. Fold it in half, match up your seams are there and then I've marked with a pin at either end okay and then I can measure it's gonna have to be three inches for the handle go there oops need a pin for that and then making sure that you don't twist it, you're going to do three inches the other side of the pin to here. And like I say, make sure it's not twisted so it comes up like this. And then flip it over and do the same on the other side. So they're sitting in between. And now I'm gonna put the bow in the middle as well. So again, find the center, just fold it in half, put it up against the pin that's already there. The bow also, of course, means that you can shut the bag What I will do is a couple of bag hacks as well, just to tell you how you can chop and change these things. So if you don't want a bow on it, you could put just a, a little tab and a button, or even a zip. There you go, okay. So everything needs to now hang down and then we get our lining. And we're going to sit the main bag inside the lining. Okay. Notice right sides together. Okay, this looks really weird but all will be revealed when the birthing has taken place. Okay. Now I'm going to clip it all the way around the top. 
And what I'm looking for is to make sure that they fit really snug. So I can line up those side seams. Remember when we were doing the lining, I said to just go a couple of millimetres more when you were going down that side seam. If by any chance, when you put one inside the other, you find that there's quite a gap here with your lining, you can always go back in and then just re-stitch down here because what you are looking for is to get that nice and snug because you're going to now stitch all the way around the top there with the handles hanging down in between. I'm gonna use clips because then it doesn't matter what way we go into the machine. And after I've clipped everything, I'm then going to go in and take all those pins out because I can't see them as I'm sewing and I don't want to be sewing across pins or getting pins stuck as I sew. So at the bottom here, we've got the birthing hole. So what we're now going to do is we're going to stitch all the way around the top there. And I'm going to do that twice because I want to make sure and when I get to the handles, I'm going to go backwards and forwards a couple of times across there as well with a little zigzag or something because I want to make sure that everything is good and tight and strong. Okay, so over to the sewing machine. Okay, so the last ditch attempt, here we go. So take off your free arm so that you've got clearance underneath. And what we're going to do is don't ever start on the lumpiest bit. Temptation is because there's a seam there that you're going to start there so that you get the stop and start there. But in actual fact, you're just making life difficult for yourself. So I'm going to take one of the clips out and just go a couple of inches before there. So I'm going to run round once side of the foot here. I'm going to move my needle back into the centre position because if you remember we moved it over. I'm going to take my stitch length up and I'm going to stitch one layer around here with the needle in that position and then I'm going to do another layer and I'm going to move the needle further to the left. As I said I want to do at least two lines of stitching here just to make it really secure. Okay, Especially when it comes to things like the handles. Now, as I'm going across here, because this bag's got a little bit of shaping, I can see already there's a bit of a kink. So if I can reach oh, mine to the cameraman, try not to stab her with the scissors. I'm just going to neaten that off, actually, so that I can get it more straight as I go round. Okay. There we go. Ooh, where did that go? Right, peg those down again. These little clips are fantastic for bag making because um, number one, you don't get stuck every time you do something wrong. But also it doesn't matter which way you pin. When you're pinning, you always have to consider which way you're going in. So when I pin with something like this, rather than pinning across here, I would try and pin this way so that as I'm stitching, I can pull my pins out, the heads are towards me and I can pull them out. Um, do not stitch over pins, especially if you've got a computerized machine. They don't like it and who can blame them? And trust me, if a needle hits a pin, it's no fun for anyone. Right. So I'm just making sure that that's all in place under here. And remember, you've got, if it's going to struggle over there, remember you've got your little black button that, like I say, it seems quite happy. There we go, across the wonky handle again. And look at the end, tiny, tiny little catch here. What I can do is I could take that stitching back if I wanted to and as I said to you just take it in a tiny bit there but that is such a weeny bit frankly life's too short so there we go
So I've run around there once and I'm now going to go around again. But like I say, I'm going to move my needle across again. So it's only just below it. I don't want to make a massive difference, but I just want to make sure I've got two sets of stitching just to make it much, much stronger. look quick at that time okay so time for the birthing um so here was the hole that you left okay hopefully if you didn't you need your seam ripper out the whole thing has to come through here so like I said if you've left that hole and it's a little bit too small you might want to get the seam ripper out and give yourself a little bit more room just to make this oh look another pin a more pleasant experience for everybody so what you end up with is two bags like that with the handles and the ties in between stand it up your lining inside now top stitching if you wanted to top stitch around here you could frankly I think it looks fine as it is we've got the ties which just are going to tie there and you can knot them if you want and there's your bow fiddle around with the bottom so inside the bag you have got still obviously the hole that you did for the birth um, which you just need to stitch up there we go knot it handles are done bow is done i've seen somebody my bow is quite restrained however if you don't want to be restrained you can make a massive bow and a massive statement but that's actually just quite a regular bag perfect for shopping <laughs>